You're listening to the Option Alpha Podcast from OptionAlpha.com, where we show you how to make smarter trades, learn how the stock market really works, and generate consistent monthly income. Monthly income. Now, your host and head trader at OptionAlpha.com, Kirk Duplessis. Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com working every single week to make this the most popular investing podcast offered online because it's based on one thing and one thing only, and that's helping you guys make smarter trades. So again, thanks so much for tuning in today. On today's show, we are going to talk about scaling. Now, this is a topic that actually comes up a lot in emails, and I often do coaching, and as many of you may or may not know, I guess, I do coaching often with a bunch of uh, traders from all over the world and people sign up for a coaching session with me. It's just an hourly cost to do coaching session. But I've recently been doing a lot of coaching sessions with a couple people who are multi-millionaire traders, meaning they're trading multi-million dollar accounts. And it's been interesting to help them progressively get from where they are to starting to scale out their strategy into bigger products and undefined risk strategies and things that we're going to talk about here today. And it's definitely a progression because, and look, it's not easy to start trading to begin with, but then it's really not easy, although you may think it is. And some of you, maybe with a smaller account now, have to realize this when you start growing into a bigger account, that it's actually tough to start scaling into a six or seven figure account. It's very hard to take the same strategies that worked on a $10 stock or a $20 stock and really start doing it at mass scale. Now, the reality is though, is that it's completely possible. So one of the ladies that I coach with and obviously will remain unnamed, one of the ladies I coach with is trading a couple million dollars and is doing about $85,000, $89,000 a month in trading profits. And so she's doing really, really well. One of her challenges is just finding enough trades or finding enough products. And so this podcast kind of came out of the conversation that I really had with her just last week on things that she can do or little tips that I gave her for how she can scale her account even beyond where she's at. Now, obviously, the name of this show is three tips for scaling a six-figure account, but it would obviously work in the seven or eight-figure range as well as you start getting higher. Now, the show's going out just before the election, so one quick note, please get out there and vote for the election. I don't care what your affiliation is. You won't ever hear me talk about any of that political stuff here. I mean, I think either way, we're both like screwed with the people that we have. It's kind of amazing that of all the people in the country, these are the two that we have to choose from. Well, I guess we have three if you include Gary Johnson for the you know third party, but really the end result here is still you got to get out and vote and uh, we'll see what the uh, reaction is for the market after the election results come in. All right. So in today's show, like I said, I want to talk about these three tips for growing or scaling your option strategy. The first tip that I have is you've got to start transitioning to undefined risk strategies. And I say this because this is the easiest way to start allocating a little bit more capital and also to start generating a little bit more premium per trade that you do. Now, of course, I make the disclaimer and disclosure all the time that I generally believe that if you're under $25,000 as an account balance, that you should still be sticking to really wide credit spreads or iron condors, iron butterflies. You shouldn't really graduate to the undefined risk strategies until you're at least over $25,000 of equity. And I think that, I mean, look, that can be the line in the sand for you. Maybe it's a little bit higher, a little bit lower. I just think you need to have a little bit more money than 10 grand in the account before you start doing some of these undefined risk strategies because you could have a little bit of a drawdown if you have a big move in the underlying. But the first tip here is definitely to graduate to those undefined risk strategies. And what that's gonna allow you to do is one, just use up a little bit more of your margin or capital, right? So you can use up a little bit more of your margin to get into a position and what it'll allow you to do is sell less contracts and get more money per contract, which means that as you scale, if you're doing, let's say, five credit spreads and taking in $100, well, now you could do three strangles and take in $300, right? So it allows you to do less contracts and at the same time to do more premium per contract, which allows for room to scale. So that's the first thing that I always tell people that I coach is that when you start scaling out your account and you start really getting, you know, 50, 100, $200,000 in equity in your account, you have to start focusing on these undefined risk strategies. Now, if you're trading 
in an IRA or retirement account and you still need to scale out, it just means that you should do really, really wide spreads, okay? Now, don't take me the wrong way or don't misinterpret what I'm saying here by saying that you need to go to the furthest strike prices that are available and buy those. I'm saying you need to go within reason as far out as possible. So that means that if the stock's trading at $100, if the 115 options are trading for a dollar, and the 120 options are trading for a dollar, then buy the 115 options, right? So you can still be a little bit rational with your decision making, but you do wanna go as far as you can with these spreads and make them basically like a synthetic strangle or straddle. So again, go as far out as you can if you're trading a larger IRA or retirement account, and that would help you get to more of a synthetic or kind of like basically like a cousin of an undefined risk strategy. Tip number two here is you've got to start transitioning to larger products. So larger products means you've got to go towards either the bigger index options, so SPX, RUT, NDX, et cetera, or you've got to start transitioning to larger priced products. Now, you guys are going to hear me clicking around here, and I apologize for that. I usually don't try to click around, but I'm just kind of navigating in my broker platform as we're talking about this. But what I mean by larger price is the big priced stocks that are out there. So the price lines, which right now is at 1467, the Googles, which is at 805, Amazon at 785, Chipotle at 359. I mean, these are large priced stocks. And that is a good thing because what that allows you to do then is in their actual options, sell less options for a higher price, which means that you have the ability or room to scale. So let's take an example here with Google, which is ticker symbol G-O-O-G-L. And that's the Alphabet company. Well, I guess they renamed themselves to Alphabet, but we all know them as Google. But right now, the stock at the time that we're recording this video is about 783. And so the December options for Google right now, the at the money straddle is trading for about $4,000, right? So that's a lot of capital for that at the money straddle. So if I go over here and I just want to see what the margin requirement would be on that trade, you have a $4,000 straddle and about a $15,000 margin requirement. That's just one contract, right? So you can see how easily it is from there to actually scale with something like Google. Now there's a couple hundred, you know, contracts of open interest on either side. So it'd probably be pretty easy to fill one. You could probably fill two or three or five very quickly in Google. And same thing with all the further out strikes in, in Google right now for December. You could probably fill, you know, five to 10 of these contracts and take in a, you know, about ten to $15,000 of premium and have anywhere between fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 of margin requirement very, very quickly. Now, this would be like pale in comparison to something that's much, much lower price, like I don't know, Pandora, which is like $11 right now. If you sold the at the money straddle and Pandora right now, you'd take in like $30, right? So you'd have to do so many Pandora straddles to make it worth it. It it just would kill you as far as commissions and fills. You just, it'd have a tough time getting that filled. So again, the tip number two here, if you're starting to scale out is start gravitating towards those higher priced securities because those higher priced stocks and ETFs are just naturally going to have a lot better pricing per contract. So a lot higher premium per contract, which means that you can scale a lot faster. Really quickly, I want to read some of these names off so that you kind of get them in your head. And we'll try to put some of these on the show notes page as well. We won't put them all there, but uh, some of the ones that are above 100 usually end up working out pretty well. So like the QQQ, IWM, GLD, Netflix, Facebook, TLT. And by the way, these don't all have to be individual equities. I just read off a bunch of ETFs. So you can trade a lot of these ETFs that are really high priced as well. IBM, Baidu, uh, Goldman Sachs, DIA, Tesla, SPY, SPY, IBB, which is a biotech ETF, Chipotle, Amazon, Google, Priceline, etc. So there you go. I mean, there's like, you know, 15 to 20 right there that you can easily scale into and scale out of. And right now, some of those actually do have implied volatility over the 50th percentile. So if you have a larger account, maybe, you know, make a shorter list of these higher price securities and use those as, you know, trading vehicles whenever possible. Again, another one that you could do if you're starting to trade more are the larger index options, which are SPX and RUT. Again, these are the cousins. They're like the older brother, older sister of SPY and IWM, but per contract, they're a lot more pricey. And so that's good. There's, they're really liquid, especially SPX and RUT. Very, very liquid. Right now, the SPX straddle for the 
at the money in December right now is trading for, and I'm just pulling this up here on my broker platform, is trading for about $9,200 in premium. So that's how much you would take in for one SPX straddle in December. Now the margin or buying power effect for just one is $42,000. So you can see it is very, very easy. Once you start transitioning to these higher price securities and products, how you can scale up quickly and kind of fill your portfolio with these trades. Now, I'm not saying just to trade the SPX or RUT or Google or whatever, but just use all of these in kind of like your toolbox as potential vehicles that you can trade moving forward. The last tip that I have for you as far as growing and scaling your strategy is if you then start running out of room in your portfolio. So you've done the undefined risk strategies, you've done the larger products, the Googles, the Amazons, the SPX, RUT. If you still find yourself running out of room in your portfolio, then start gravitating over to futures options. Now, I haven't really talked about that a lot on this podcast. We'll have a show coming up here in the next couple episodes uh, talking about futures options. But the real key thing that you have to understand is that futures options work pretty much the same as regular options options, except there might be slight differences in pricing and they settle to actual futures contracts. So for example, like the e-mini futures contracts, which is just slash ES if you're in most broker platforms, instead of settling to the SPY or settling to cash like the SPX, it actually settles to the futures contract itself. So that's going to be a little bit different. And again, that's why I don't recommend this unless you have a substantial portfolio because settling the futures contracts, if you are not there to handle them, could be really, really tough as far as handling the margin that's required or the capital that's required to hold that position. Now, the beautiful thing about the futures contracts, especially like the e-mini S&P futures contracts, again, slash ES is the ticker symbol for that, is that again, they are extremely liquid. So it just gives you another pool basically to play in. Like that's how I think about it. It's like there's a lot of swimming pools that we can go and start swimming in. And so the ES minis are extremely liquid. At the time that I'm doing this video right now, the market isn't even open in the morning and there's already thousands of futures contracts that have been traded this morning and a lot of futures options that have been traded this morning in pre-market trading. So there's a lot of activity in these. And again, they have high value per contract. So it's very, very easy for you to scale into these. Just again, to give you an idea of the type of scale that you can get, the e-minis for December expiration right now, if you sold one of those, you'd have a credit coming in of about $4,700 and about $3,200 of buying power effect, depending on the margin account that you have in the portfolio that you have. So again, you can still scale into these. That's just one straddle for the at the money e-mini futures in December, you can definitely scale this out. There are hundreds of thousands of contracts traded in some of these strike prices for the e-minis. It is completely liquid enough for many, many, many people to then scale out as far as they need to. Okay. So hopefully this has been a really cool little episode. It was a little short, but it was, I want to make it really targeted because I get this question a lot, especially with people who are now gravitating towards higher accounts, starting to allocate a little bit more more money towards your account. And if you're the person that's been listening to the show and you don't yet have a six figure account, please understand that if you stick with it, you will get there, right? If you keep trading, you keep allocating money towards your trading account, keep putting a little bit more money into your trading account, you're going to get to the point where you're going to start to need to move over and transition from some of the smaller credit spreads and iron condors and things like that to more of the uh, things that we talked about today, undefined risk strategies, larger products. And then eventually, if you need to, that's really only a need is number three, which is the futures options. So before we get into the closing bell segment, again, I want to tell you guys about our special freebie for today's show. It is our seven step trade entry checklist. So if you've been thinking to yourself, okay, I want to start trading. I don't know what to do if I get into a trade or I don't know what things I need to check. Well, we put together this seven-step trade entry checklist that basically goes through in order the things that you need to look at before you get into a trade. And what's cool about this seven-step checklist is that when you look at it, it's meant to be in order that it would get you out of a bad trade early. So if you don't you know, check off box number one, you move on to the next trade and you check box number one again on that trade and the next and the next. And you only work your way down the list if the trade continues to work out. So it's meant to actually save you a lot of time in looking for trades and getting into trades. Again, it's completely free. You can get it to by going to optionalpha.com slash seven steps. Again, that's just the number seven, 
optionalpha.com slash seven steps or by texting in the words seven steps to four four two two two. Again, that's just the number seven. S T E P S to four, four, two, 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 and then just reply with your email address. And we'll make sure that you get a copy of that completely free. Now the closing bell, find out which stocks we're looking at right now. Trades we're making and hear our game plan moving forward. Moving forward. All right, so in today's closing bell segment, I want to talk about a trade that we just got into in XBI. Now, this is a security that we haven't actually traded all that often, but recently it's had a little bit higher implied volatility. It's actually been on a bit of a down move, which has actually kind of worked out in our favor. But this is the S&P Biotech ETF, and has recently moved from as high as about 70 down to about 56, 57 or so. And so we started to get into a position here in XBI and started to sell a couple sets of strangles in this stock, or I'm sorry, in this ETF. And the reason I like it right now is again, because rising implied volatility, because it just diversifies our portfolio a little bit more. So it's not the typical GLD, GD, DX, SLV, USO, the typical you know positions that we're in. It kind of gets us into a different area, gives us a little bit of diversification in biotech. And basically, it's really one of the only ETFs that's had a really big down move, although the market has stayed pretty calm as the, as of the time of this recording. So in the case of XBI, we're selling the December contracts. Those are about 49 days out from the time that we're recording this video. We're selling the one standard deviation calls and puts on each side. So about the 15% probability level on each side or about the 15 delta on each side. We're keeping this very systematic so that we have about a 70% chance of success on this trade. So what that means is that right now we're looking at XBI that's trading around 56.84, so just under 57 is where the ETF is. And so we're selling the 64 call options above the market and the 47 put options below the market. And again, how do we determine those strike prices? We just went into our broker platform, looked for the 15% probability level or strike prices that are as close to 15% as possible. If your broker platform doesn't have that, you can look for the 15 delta options on each side. And then we just simply sold those options. So we sold the 64 calls, the 47 puts, in total, we collected a premium of $137 per strangle that we sold. Now we're doing another set of two because we've already done a couple sets of two in XBI and we want to do more in this security actually moving forward. So our philosophy is always just to leg into these positions or ladder into these positions over time. So a set of two today, a set of two, you know, in a couple days, another set of two in a couple days. And what this does is this helps us average into the position and average into the different strike prices. So we may change our strike prices from today to maybe whenever we enter the new next set of, you know, two or three contracts later on this week or next week. We may change our strike prices based on where the stock is moving, but that gives us a really good kind of wide position that we're working with. Now, in the case of strangles, we're always going to manage those strangles at about 50% of the premium received. So in this case, we'll be looking to take this trade off at around $65, $70 when it gets down to that value. So we'll close this trade early as well as the other strangles that we've started adding in XBI. And again, this is a really good trade. I like this trade. You know, the stock has moved down or the ETF has moved down from 70 to basically like 56, 57 in about a month and a half. So it's had a pretty big drop. And so we're just playing a little bit of like this mean reversion. The stock, you know, may not drop as much anymore, may find and some stability and kind of sit here for a little bit. And all of that would be really, really good for our position and portfolio. Thanks for listening to the Option Alpha podcast. If you liked what you heard, please drop by iTunes and leave a rating or comment. Plus, you can get everything. Free email updates for future shows, transcripts, video tutorials, case studies, and more. Just visit our website at optionalpha.com. All right, now I truly hope you enjoyed today's show and got at least one thing out of it that you can apply right now to make you a smarter, more profitable trader and investor. And as always, you can get additional resources and links mentioned in the show and some related video training on scaling by going to our show notes page at optionalpha.com slash show 69. That's just the number 69, optionalpha.com slash show 69. And until next time, happy trading.